Oh, oh shoot. Um, wait, hold on. I didn't know it. Wait, stop. Come on, come on. Hi, everyone. My name is Tanner, and welcome to another episode of the Main to Man Coverage Podcast. Um, for this episode, we will be doing our second mock draft. For those listening on iTunes, Spotify, this will be the first mock draft you'll be hearing from us. And if uh, you're on YouTube, this is the second one we're doing. Um, last time we did this, I did the um, odd number picks, such as one, three, five. Um, today I'll be doing the even number picks, and Mason will be doing the odd number picks. Uh, Mason, how are you doing today? Doing good, ready to make the most accurate mock draft of all time. Yeah, we, we've <laughs> had experience with this. Also, we're doing screen share because that way you can see the board, and we have no face cam, so hopefully you can um, see the draft board, um, the fullest screen you can. So we're going to begin. Mason, you have the first pick with the Jaguars. Who are you taking? Um, this is the hardest pick of the draft. Just kidding. I'm going Trevor Lawrence. I feel like this is going to be the unanimous pick. Uh, he's just – he's a debatably a generational talent. We haven't seen a quarterback prospect like them, and the Jaguars would be very not smart if they don't get Trevor Lawrence with this first pick. I agree. Second pick. Um, so the last mock draft we did, uh, you had the Jets sticking with Sam Darnold, the quarterback. I have them going a new direction. I have them taking Zach Wilson, um, quarterback, out of BAU. Uh, a B- Wait, hold on. Wait, Mason, hold on. Can you stop the recording for a moment? Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Taryn. Welcome back to another episode of the Man to Man Coverage Podcast. Today, I have my good friend and co-host, Mason, joining me. What's up, guys? And today, we have... Another mock draft. We've done one before, but for those listening on iTunes and Spotify, this will be the first one you're hearing. Um, and if you're seeing this on YouTube, we do not have face cam, so that way you can see our draft board. Um, for those listening on audio platforms, since you visually cannot see the draft board, uh, we'll make sure to really make sure that we say these picks clearly and that there's good clarification with them. Mason will be doing the odd number picks, so one, three, five, etc. I'll be doing the even ones, two, four, six. So, Mason, pick one. Who do you have the Jaguars taking? Um, this is the biggest no-brainer pick and one of the most recent – and uh, the no, biggest, most uh, no-brainer pick this draft is Trevor Lawrence. Um, generational talent, dude's a beast. He's going to do amazing. Not much you can say about him. Yeah, um, that's kind of consistent. Number one pick. I'm not the biggest fan of Lawrence. I've said before, but he is still a very great quarterback. Um, number two, I'm going with Zach Wilson for the New York Jets. Um, I think that the Jets should go in a new direction, give up on their current quarterback, Sam Darnold. I think Zach Wilson coming out of BYU, he's my favorite quarterback in this class. I don't think he's the best, but just the way his ball just flies through the air has kind of this spiralness to it, but it's very accurate. I love his movement in the pocket. I think he has the biggest ceiling in this draft class. Um, I see Trevor Lawrence as this very stable quarterback, like a Matt Ryan. But I think with Zach Wilson, he could reach levels of like a Russell Wilson uh, types of levels, Baker Mayfield, just great ball placement downfield. Wilson is really great in the pocket. So I have the Jets taking Zach Wilson too. Yeah, I like that pick. I think Wilson, um, I think it's kind of like, it's almost like consensus number two pick. I feel like there's a lot of reports coming out saying they love Wilson. And I think he he has a great upside. He does have some bad tendencies. Um, his footwork at times is a little inconsistent, but Nothing a little coaching can't fix. But other than that, this guy, he's got a cannon of an arm, and he, he's pretty mobile, so I really like that pick for the Jets. Um, for the Dolphins now, I'm going to go with a more safer pick for him. I think they're going to go Penny Sewell here. I think um, your biggest uh, need is offensive line or receiver. 
Uh, Jamar Chase could go here, but I feel like Penny Sewell's is such a great talent. Mm -hmm. um, he's a little raw, um, but he can st his upside is ridiculous. He could end up being one of the best tackles in the league, and I feel like getting a franchise tackle to protect Tua is something that you can't pass up on. Yeah, we've mentioned before we're very high on Tua. Um, I thought he had a great rookie year. I like this pick a lot for the Dolphins. A playmaker I do like here, but the Dolphins have Devontae Parker and Mike Gesicki, who are both really good. Um, number four, so I'm interested to see what you think of this one, Mason, but usually in the draft, there's a pick in the top seven that usually doesn't go the way people think. Two years ago, Saquon Barkley went to the Giants. People thought he was going to go to the Browns. There's usually a big playmaker going early. I think the Falcons say, hey, we have Matt Ryan for another year. They've kind of said they're sticking with him. I don't see them going just in fields. I'm going to give them Jamar Chase out of LSU. I think they load up on wide receiver. I think you have with Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, Jamar Chase, Russell Gage. Those four playmakers are great. And I think the Falcons try to get another Super Bowl run and try to win a Super Bowl. So, I'm interested to see what you think of that one, Mason. Yeah, it's definitely not the most pick you see on other mock drafts, but I think it, this could actually be a great fit because if you're an opposing defense, I would be terrified of going against <laughs> those three receivers that you just named all have Pro Bowl. I mean, two of them are already all pros, and then you have Jamar Chase, who has one of the biggest wide receiver upsides we've seen in a very long time. I mean, that's just a scary trio. And with Julio getting a little older, you could see Jamar Chase maybe taking over Julio's role as Julio starts mm -hmm. to get older. Um, I'm, sh I'm sure Julio will stay with the Falcons, just, but, but his production probably will just go down due to age. Um, Justin Fields would kind of make sense here, but I feel, like, I feel like the Falcons really like Matt Ryan, and I don't mm -hmm. think they're ready to give up on him. Yeah, he's a great community guy. He's just really good for that type of um... – area Atlanta has so Mason you have the five pick with the Bengals so the five pick with the Bengals this guy he's not rated very high on uh the board but I think he is up there with uh Penny Sewell I'm gonna go over Sean Slater he's number 11 um I like I like the playmakers here I like Waddle Smith and Pitts a lot but I feel like after what you saw happen to your franchise quarterback um last year I don't think you can allow him to sit behind that terrible offensive line again and Rashawn Slater has been shooting up the draft boards um a lot of uh, some teams actually have him higher rated than Sewell um I personally don't but Slater is an absolute stud and I think this guy uh is perfect with Burrow because you need to protect him after what happened last year yeah Rashawn Slater is going up the board faster than Tyreek Hill's speed but <laughs> in all seriousness this dude is skyrocketing he's becoming a top 10 name um, I really love this pick, Mason. I think you got to protect Joe Burrow. Um, so, yeah, I agree. Six with the Philadelphia Eagles, one of my favorite teams. Um, I'm going to have them go Kyle Pitts out of Florida. Now, initially with Pitts, I was like, okay, he's a tight end. He's nice. But he is one of people's favorite players from multiple different sources. And I really love his play style. He's a very fast tight end. He's not a tight end. He's just this athletic person who has so many gifts and abilities. And for me, with Jamar Chase off the board, Jalen Waddle and Devontae Smith are both very nice players. Waddle, I see a bit more boomer bust. Smith is good, but I think Kyle Pitts, kind of in this eagle scheme, is really nice. Um also, Philadelphia, if you look at their social media, a lot of their wide receivers like Travis Fulgham, who was an absolute goat last season, and Jalen Rager are really confident in Jalen Hurts, the quarterback. So I think you go with a tight end here and just kind of let, let that uh, receiver room develop a bit. Yeah, Kyle Pitts, um, him being labeled tight end is just it, – it's not doing him justice. You should label this guy a playmaker. I mean – <laughs> he's 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 massive. I I'm, I give him like a Darren Waller comp because he's just so big and oh. fast, and he can. Okay. He's a very great possession catcher. Um, I like I like this pick a lot. I would have picked uh, Kyle Pitts um, if I was in your situation as well because I feel like Smith is extremely good. But for what the Eagles need, I feel like they just need a guy where you can throw it up to one on one and he can go down and grab it. Um, Smith can be like that, but Smith's more of a burner guy. 
And I feel like mm-hmm. they have that in Rager, and they, they want to see what they have in Rager before they get two of those guys. Yeah. Um, and Kyle Pitts, I mean, you can line this dude up at tight end, out out uh, out left, out right. I mean, he can line up anywhere on the field um, offensively. Love that pick. Yeah, well, also it fits because the Eagles like to draft um, – where they're really good at. Like, they got a quarterback in Jordan Hurts last year, even though they already have a good quarterback. So, the Eagles have a good tight end in Goddard. So, I think the Pitts pick makes a lot of sense. So, maybe the Eagles' bad drafting actually works out for them for <laughs> once. Okay. I'm going <laughs> to uh, I'm gonna go with the seventh pick. Um, last mock draft, we had a quarterback going here, but I feel like with the amount of money you're paying Jared Goff, I don't think it makes much sense. Um, I don't think Goff is a franchise guy, but paying him $30 million plus having a young guy doesn't make sense. So I'm going to go give someone for Jared Goff to go uh, throw to because it looks like they're going to lose Marvin Jones. I'm going to go Devontae Smith, um, wide receiver out of Alabama. Um, I think this dude has all the tools um, that he needs to be a, a great wide receiver. I mean, this guy this guy catches the ball um, on a screen play. He's going to take it 80 yards to the house. I mean, his route running is ridiculous. Great hands. Um, he's he's my second best receiver, um, but like him and Jamar Chase are like very neck and neck. I don't think either of them has a, uh, the edge over the other. Um, but no, Devontae Smith, I would love this just because it, it seems like the Lions are going to be losing a lot of talent. And I feel like um, you got to give someone for your uh, for to Jerry Goff to throw to. Yeah. Um, last time we did a mock draft, we had the Lions pick a quarterback. And like the next day, the Goff trade. <laughs> like, you got to be kidding me. Uh, I don't like that. I, I think Smith fits very well in Detroit. The Lions are probably going to lose some wide receivers, and I think you have to go playmaker here. Number eight, the Panthers. A lot of people are going Justin Fields or Trey Lance. Um, but as someone who watches Panthers games, uh, this secondary is really bad, especially with the loss of Trey Boston, um, who got released from the team. This secondary is bad, and I think they go Patrick Sertain of Alabama. The Panthers really like to go defense with this new regime with Matt Rule. We saw last year with Jeremy Chin, who was really good in the secondary, but besides that, the secondary was not really addressed, um, and I think Sertain will be a great addition. You know, you have Brian Burns up front. You got uh, Grotos Moss uh up front, you got Derek Brown. You have all these great defensive players up front. I think you need to go and get something with this secondary and help. You're in an NFC South with the Falcons, Saints, and Buccaneers, who all have fantastic playmakers. You need help in the secondary. I haven't seen anyone mark a corner to the Panthers, and it's kind of a bit shocking because this secondary really was not that great last year. So I think you address it, continue to build this young defensive core. So Patrick Sertain is going to go at eight for me. Yeah, I really like this pick. I think other than Dante Jackson, they have no corner help. And I think Patrick Sertain's good here. And I I feel like they might just be sold on Teddy Bridgewater. Who knows? They make a blockbuster trade and get Watson and don't even have this pick. But you never know what the Panthers and what they're going to do. But I like this pick with Sertain. Yeah, so you have the number nine pick with Denver. All right, this, you know, this, this is what I, this is my logic. I feel like every draft, there's always a team that takes uh, a quarterback and we don't really think of before the draft because we don't think one of these guys is going to fall. And I know Justin Fields is there, but I think a guy who fits their system better is Trey Lance. Um, I think if Patrick Sertan was there and Trey Lance was there, I think it'd be a tough choice between those two because those are Mm -hmm. two positions they need. But I think Drew Locke hasn't shown you enough to where you have to you owe him a chance. And with Trey Lance, um, this guy is like, it's not like you're taking a random chance on a quarterback. Like Trey Lance is a stud. Um, you watch his film. This dude's running over people. Um, he His decision-making is ridiculous. He threw 28 touchdowns and zero picks um, when he played a full season. Um, that's ridiculous. Um, it is a North Dakota quarterback, so that's a little concerning. But other than that, I mean, <laughs> you watch the tape and the, he passes every eye test. Um he kind of reminds me of like a like a really mini Cam Newton just because of how physical he is when he runs. But no, I really like Trey Lance here. I love the roast on Carson Wentz. It makes me <laughs> <laughs> um, In all seriousness, though, I really like this pick, Mason. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite picks so far that either of us have made. Lance just 
fits the Broncos. I don't know, just kind of that build he has. He's a very athletic quarterback, very tall. He reminds me a lot of John, John Elway, former mm-hmm. Broncos quarterback, and um, Elway's in kind of a top position with the Broncos organization. Both Lance and Elway aren't the most athletic, but they're very mobile, and they can make those big plays. So I think Lance, I really love him to Denver. I like him more to the Broncos than, say, an Eagles or Panthers. Of the Cowboys at 10, I love Caleb Farley to this Dallas team, and that's what I'm picking. I just think that's a total scheme fit. I uh, really like Farley, so um, that's what I have to say about that one. Yeah, that was that's the same pick from last time, I think. I think this is a great uh, fit if uh, Farley is still on the board, so yeah, I really like that pick. Um, going to hop into the Giants now. I, I think this would be a Match made in heaven for both sides. Well, maybe not for one side, but for definitely for the Giants. Jalen <laughs> Waddle to the Giants. Um, I think I think a lot of uh, personnel and coaches on the Giants still want to give Daniel Jones a chance just because he was that six overall pick. And Jalen Waddle, he he's a speedster. He he just when he gets the ball in his hands, he makes plays. Um, I feel like Daniel Jones really hasn't had that. I mean, Evan Ingram is like that, but sometimes he can't get the ball in his hands. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, like, you know, they have Darius Slayton, but I don't think he's a true number one. Same with Golden Tate. And I think Jalen Waddle gives uh, the the Giants a playmaker they really haven't had since uh, Odell. Yeah, I like Waddle to the Giants because I like the atmosphere. He's a very big playmaker, and I feel like that fits the New York uh, culture very well. Um, with the 49ers at 12, this is a hard one. A lot of people say they're moving on from Jimmy Garoppolo. I just don't see it. I feel like Kyle Shanahan really likes Jimmy G. Um, so I think the Niners are going to go and not do that. They're going to go and take a player who is not Jeremiah Owuso, even though he is a very great player. <laughs> um, I think that they're going to take a secondary player who, who not a lot of people are talking about and – Excuse me as I fix this, but um, that's going to be J.C. Horn. Um, I really like J.C. Horn to this team. There's rumors that Richard Sherman might be leaving this past um, offseason, um, and I feel like that you need to fix that position. The linebacking core is great with Fred Warner. The front seven is really good, and I feel like with kind of the secondary, that's kind of part of the reason they – Lost a Super Bowl, if you would agree with that, Mason. So I think that uh, just J.C. Horn makes a lot of sense. What's what's your thoughts on that pick? Yeah, well, Tanner's fixing the board, so <laughs> malfunctions. <laughs> um, I'm actually glad uh, this happened though, because J.C. Horn, I like. I think this guy is a beast. Um, his press game is uh, phenomenal. Um, I watched some tape on him. He played against Florida, so he lined up on Kyle Pitts a couple times, and he actually pressed a, a massive tight end in Kyle Pitts, which is no easy feat. So, I mean, he's doing it, doing it against uh, NFL talent because Kyle Pitts is an NFL talent. And I feel like with Richard Sermon um, inevitably uh, leaving, I feel like you have to address the corner position because it is a reason why they did not do so well um, in the Super Bowl and uh, just this past year. Um, and I think J.C. Horn – fits that scheme too i think it's just an overall great fit yeah um the board is fixed and then we move on to 13 mason you have the charger selection so i'm gonna i've gotten all the young quarterbacks and i'm gonna keep the same trend alive i'm gonna go christian derisaw i just love the i just like like the idea of keeping your young guy upright um i think the chargers they have a they have a good enough uh playmakers um their defense they have Derwin James coming back. I'm really not concerned about them all too much. Um, solid corners, Joey Bosa. Um, but Christian Derisaw, I feel like, really fits a need that they have. Um, they traded they traded away Trey Turner last year, got Russell Okung back. He's not very amazing, if I do say so myself. And I feel like Derisaw, you can plug him at guard, too, if you wanted to. And I feel like I just like the idea of keeping your young guy upright. Yeah, each of the rookie quarterbacks last year have an offensive tackle. Herbert with the Chargers, you gave them an OT. Same with the Bengals with Burrow and the Dolphins with two, and I love that thinking. The Vikings are interesting at 14. Minnesota seems to be Kirk Cousins, 
is our guy. Um, also, I should mention this is a no trade mock draft. If we did do trades, I could see the Saints jumping up here, but I don't think that will happen. The Vikings offensive line could use some help, and I just like Elijah Vera Tucker there, offensive tackle. Um, I think that you know teams will reach an offensive line because I think there's a shortage of them in the NFL. I feel like most teams already. We've talked about several teams with bad offensive lines: the Bengals, Chargers, Dolphins, like. Most teams have bad offensive lines rather than good ones. So I think that there's kind of an offensive line issue going on in the NFL. Um, and I think we're going to see some reaches. I think Vera Tucker, I don't have him going 18 through 25, but I think the Vikings take him a bit earlier. Uh, you look at this Minnesota offense with Dalvin Cook, Stephon Diggs, Kirk Cousins. You're good to go there. And I think you just need to go and get um, some offensive line. Yeah, I really like this pick. Um, Tucker is a little bit of a reach here, but I feel like with offensive line, you kind of have to reach a lot because these guys go off the board extremely quickly. Um, they have him listed as a tackle, but I think he can really fit that guard mold really good. Um, but, but for the Vikings, their whole offensive line is just not good at all. So, <laughs> I mean, it's like you, you line them up wherever, it's going to help you out. Um, I think he's um, – probably the fourth best offensive lineman in this draft. Um, I would love to see him go to the Cardinals, but um, if he ended up going to the Vikings, I think that's a great fit because Kirk Cousins proved um, himself why he should be the starter for the Vikings. And I feel like um, their their biggest need is either corner to, uh, or uh, offensive line. There's no good corners on the board right now for 14. So I really like that pick. Yeah. Um, who do you have with the Patriots at 15? And so finally, this guy's coming off the board. Justin Fields is going to New England. I feel like Cam Newton, um, his future is very uncertain, not only with the Patriots, but in general. Um, Stidham is not good at all. Then they have Brian Hoyer. Um, they're linked to Marcus Mariota, but it's like I feel like the Patriots need to get a young guy because – this team has had Tom Brady for 20 years. I think it's time to restart with your quarterback. You don't need to go and get a veteran guy unless it's like a Watson, of course. But, I mean, there's not many of those guys up for trade. Um, and I really like this fit because I feel like Justin Fields, he has a lot of uh, technical difficulties – or not technical difficulties, technical um, – I guess you should say like footwork, stuff like that, um, reading, reading a defense. But I feel like under Bill Belichick and – his discipline, I feel like Justin Fields could be really great for this organization. Yeah, and I, I think Fields makes sense at 15. I like Fields. Uh, I like him. He's not great. Uh, he's not bad. I like the Patriots fit. The Colonels at 16, say last year, took Isaiah, Isaiah Simmons, a linebacker, but he plays on the outside. This year, they say we're taking a linebacker, this time on the inside. We're going Micah Parsons for the Colonels. Um, I really like this fit for him. I think that um, Micah Parsons falling makes sense. Um, if you look at the past couple of picks, um, offensive line, two new teams, Patriots feel like they might not go linebacker. And then, you know, Chargers, Vikings, Niners, y'all have really great inside linebackers. Giants, you could use a linebacker, but Devontae Smith was there. So we have the Cardinals going Micah Parsons. I really like this fit. Um, I could, I almost want Gregory Rousseau. I really love Gregory Rousseau, the edge rusher, but I feel like that the Cardinals need that linebacker, that captain of that defense. You have young players in the second day, Buda Baker, Byron Murphy. The defensive line is nice, but that linebacking core, Jordan Hicks, is not very consistent. He has a couple of highlight plays, but he's not like this elite player. Chandler Jones is nice, but he's up there as with his age. And Isaiah Simmons is like a safety linebacker. So I think you get Michael Parsons. You have the comp captain of the offense with Kyle Murray. I think you go get the captain of the defense and go with Micah Parsons. Yeah, no, this would be a fantastic fit. I mean, if you have a defense um, where you're building around Simmons and Parsons, I feel like um, that's two, like those two athletic, versatile guys that are just like you can line up on a lot of people. And I feel like that's a nightmare for a lot of offenses. If you have two of those guys, um, I think this fit is perfect because, like you said, Hicks is extremely inconsistent. Um, he's a good tackler, good in the run, um, very poor in uh, pass coverage and uh, rushing the passer. So I really like this pick for the Cardinals. 
Yeah, um, I think that's a really great selection. Um, I'm glad you agree, Mason, as a Cardinals fan. Um, and then if you want to go with the uh, uh, Las Vegas pick at 17. So the Raiders, I'm going to go Gregory Rousseau. Um, ever since they've traded Khalil Mack, they've ranked dead last in pressures and um, sacks per year. So I feel like getting another edge rusher to line up across Max Crosby would be fantastic for him. Um, I feel like maybe they would go like a receiver here, but there's no receivers at 17 that's worth going for. And you already got rugs. Um, and I really like Rousseau here just because, like I said earlier, they really need help on that D-line. And overall, the defense is in general, because I feel like the offense is somewhat sound. Um, but yeah, Greg Rousseau. I like that pick. I really love Max Crosby, but I think Rousseau could help the Raiders. I could see them going Mac Jones here, but I like how he changed it up. And I think that the Raiders defense is terrible <laughs> and they need to fix it. Uh, that one, part, part one of the mark draft, everyone will be doing part two um, pretty soon. Um, if you're listening to this on Apple, um, iTunes or Spotify, probably be up in a week or so, but these will be picks 1 through 17, and the rest will be 18 through 32, and we'll see you all then. Take care.